Anyway, so I'll be very brief. Uh, don't have any data to show, obviously. So there's some abstract. Yeah, so the project is uh, is very focused and it's it combined. It's a uh, basically it's mostly in-house expertise because the GSC is the best place in the world to work, right? We have all the knowledge. Um, and of course, one loan I and arrest. So, project summary. So, a high higher severity forest fires, that is higher temperatures, deeper burns, lead to overall greater uh, emissions of carbon dioxide and have the potential to release old legacy carbon uh, that is very old in terms of C14 age and harmful constituents that are, were previously uh, buried in deeper layers of soil and permafrost. And of course, they can also uh, release contaminants themselves created by the forest fire. And of course, they are very disruptive to any kind of industries uh, where, where fires take place. So the ability to evaluate boreal fire severity over the recent geological past would find a much needed historical context that is currently lacking of modern estimates of burn depth. So as it is now, there is no real, there is no good method to estimate the temperatures of, of severity of forest fires going back in time. So what this project is doing is that through a series of experiments and applications using dated, uh, dated sediment cores from lakes. So there is no fieldwork involved in this project. We are piggybacking on other projects, uh, Josue's project, projects up in northern territories, and also some from, uh, projects in, uh, in northern Alberta. So that minimized fieldwork costs to zero. Um, so this study aims to develop a novel geochemical approach to determine boreal fire severity over time to inform national policies that promote adaptation and resilience in boreal communities under a changing climate. So in case of this project, here is a, uh, a, a snapshot taken from the, um, the Canadian Wild, uh, Wildland Fire Information System uh, by Intercan, an interactive map for the day August 30th, 2023, last year. You can see here that we have out of control of fires over a thousand hectares all across the north, all across the boreal forest. And just from perspective, some perspective, last year I think Canada uh, contributed roughly one quarter of all wildfire emissions globally. And I think Canada's last year's CO2 emissions from Canada were, were a record. So in terms of CO2 by itself is very important. So to get technical, because this project is entirely focused on geochemical applications. So compound specific isoanalysis by gas hydrography isolation by structure. So this is what our, our lab has several of these. And so, you know, as a tool to fingerprint sources of uh, organic compounds in the environment, we have used this, this technology, this technique. So what happens here is we have our organic compounds, our fire markers, for example, are separated by gas chromatograph. And then if you want to analyze carbon iso ratios, you can bust them. Hydrogen iso ratios in your organic compound to pyrolyze them at a higher temperature. And so you have a fixed magnet on this uh, on this iso ratio mass spec. And in the case of uh, carbon dioxide, for example, you have you ionize your carbon dioxide and it's you know uh, accelerated down a flight tube, and then you have collectors set up to measure mass 44, 45. 42. So you're measuring the carbon iso signature on, on a compound that's separated by gas photography, but it is the bulk, it is the bulk carbon iso signature. And so this is very useful. Uh, we've used this in the past to fingerprint sources. And so here's a, you know, where we, we carried out in the Athabasca oil sands region. Here you have a plot of carbon-13 uh, versus uh, on the x-axis and hydrogen, uh, hydrogen isotope analysis of values on the y-axis uh, with one compound as an example here, phenin 3 So phenin 3 is a polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. Those are compounds that are produced by the incomplete combustion. For example, in forest fires, they're a major contaminant from forest fires. They have a wide variety of other sources, as you can see here. Um, and so th those are one of the, the, the markers we're going to target for our research to understand fire severity. And so for understanding sources, use this technique. And so here we have a nice separation between different sources using these two isotopes. So how do you look at severity? Well, we have an instrument in our lab for the last couple of years. It's a, it's a gas uh, chromatograph interface with an overtrap explorers mass spec. And what is this different, how this is different than a, a magnetic sector is obviously, uh, you know, uh, you look at fragments. Uh, so traditional mass spectrometry, 
and now we're not converting it to carbon dioxide. We're looking at fragments that are broken down in the source. And then uh, because of the high resolution, this has a very, very, uh, it's, it's very, it's, it's very good at separating very, very small amounts of mass of two different compounds. So with that, you can actually look at natural abundance isotope ratios. It requires specialized modified software, which we are still in the process of getting, but uh, you can use this technique for natural abundance isotope ratios. Um, and you could also look, use this technique to, uh, to determine carbon-13 and deuterium and multiple substitutions of heavy isotopes with molecular molecules, for example, clumping, so Jill's way talked about earlier, that reflect temperature-dependent chemical reactions and physical processes. So more clumping means you have a lower temperature fire in theory, higher clumping, uh, sorry, uh, less clumping means you have higher temperatures. So because of all the, you know, this, this work involves a lot of experimentation to determine, you know, how temperature relates to clumping and pHs, and also to see if we can, we can use uh, the fragments of pHs as they're ionized in the source to see if we can separate those and, and, and relate those to potential temperatures. And obviously there's a lot of work to do looking at different types of burn material different oxygen conditions, so on and so forth. So I guess, as I mentioned, it's entirely lab-based uh, and focused on this instrument.